Hi guys, this is Katie Bunchout, the founder and CEO over here at Certum Solutions in North Carolina. Today I'm going to go over when you want to use the right check function in QuickBooks Online and when you don't want to use the right check function in QuickBooks Online. I'm not going to cover the reporting per se. I will show you how to print a check on check voucher paper. And I'm not going to go over the actual expense uh, transaction process, but I will do that in a sister video right after this one and I will add them both to a playlist so you can compare. If you do have any questions, please make sure you add a comment or send me a message. Visit our website, www.certumsolutions.com so we can help you. I give a free half hour consultation to anyone that reaches out to us uh, if you have any particular questions about your situation. I'm also putting a uh, discount link to QuickBooks Online in the description. Make sure that you put your payment information in before your trial expires or you will not get are 50% off the first year discount that um, that you could get otherwise, okay? I can't wait to hear from you guys, but with all that being said, let's get started. I want to make sure we keep this short and sweet for you. To enter a check, you want to go ahead and click the new button in the top left, and you're going to select the check option. It may be tempting to hit expense, but you don't want to do that right now if you're doing a true check, and we're about to go through why. So we'll click check. If you are using a treasury service, something online, um, you don't have to print the voucher check and you have no interest in keeping a check disbursement report, you can go ahead and use those expenses if you want to. Um, you know, if you have stuff synced in, so many companies now with the with everything being automated uh, don't need this check function as much as we used to. But there are still organizations out there that rely on this, and it's a great way to slice and dice some of your formal payables versus some of those quick, quick, you know, expense transactions that you may just want to um, use the other form for. Okay, so I know everyone's familiar with this screen, but just in case you're not, you can use this clock here to see recent transactions and to go back and check them. You've got your question mark in the top right, which is for your help, um, but you can always reach out to us too. You have your options down here at the bottom if you wanna cancel your transaction, if you wanna print the transaction, but if you hold on, I'm gonna show you how to actually get to a print transaction screen where you're not doing it one at a time. If you need to order checks, don't use this button. Call us, we've got, again, a discount. We want to help the people we work with, so we do have a discount code we can pass on. You can also make this recurring. Um, usually you wanna make bills recurring, but if you wanna make a check recurring, maybe for rent or something, you just want it to pop up into your 2B print queue for your checks every month, you can go ahead and make this recurring. And then you can also void them from here, okay? So with all that being said, let's go ahead and enter a quick transaction. I'm picking on Avenue Electricians because I know it's going to bring up this purchase order, okay? You're going to then pick your bank account that it needs to come out of. You put in your payment date, make sure your mailing address is in there. And then if it is just a quick handwritten check and you don't, don't need to print anything, just write your check number here. If you need to print it, Go ahead and leave that checked for print later, and let's move on. I'm not going to add the purchase order there right now, but you could if you needed to. If you have multiple locations, you'll select the location here. These are just some custom fields that I have turned on. This has brought over the expense from the last time I entered this transaction, but if it doesn't bring it up, go ahead and enter it, and if you have the option turned on, it will sticky this so that if you have the same transactions over and over, it picks it up for you. I'm leaving the amount $20, and then I'm marking this billable, billable just to show you you can add a customer here. And if you are doing uh, job costing, the funny thing is with QuickBooks Online versus desktop, online actually can job cost at the account level, whereas desktop uh, job costs everything off of the item level. So if you're coming over from desktop, that's a big change, okay? So make sure you pay attention to that. I'm going to unclick my billable box. Uh, if I left it clicked, it would then also pop up on my unbilled charges report so I could invoice this out to the customer. You can also add markups if you have that feature turned on. I do not have that turned on right now.
Classes are just another way to slice and dice. Uh, you can use them for several different things. If you're tracking revenue by state and so on and so forth, you can do it by division. Um, anything that you need just an extra tag on, I would save this to, for a biggie because you can do just regular tags in QuickBooks, but for classes, they're more formal. You can run financials based on them where they actually tie in. Um, so if you have something big you need a class for, use this field. If you don't have something big, don't just use it to use it because one day you might need it and then it's already gonna be used for something else, okay? Can you tell where I've got lessons learned here? Okay, so moving down, item details. If you are tracking product productivity by product, or service, you want to use this section, but you don't have to use this section to use your job costing. Again, like we talked about before. Now, you can put your memo here, and if you have backup or source documents, as they call them in the biz, um, you want to go ahead and enter that down here in the bottom left, okay? Now, we can cancel, clear, print, order checks, make recurring more, just going over that one more time, but for us, we're going to save and close. We're already at six minutes and I need to get this wrapped up for you. To print the check, go to new, print checks. I'm not going to go through print setup. I will cover that on another video, okay? But you'll see that the check came up here. You wanna make sure you're starting check numbers right. You wanna make sure you're picking the right account. And you wanna go ahead and hit preview and print. And it brings it up in a neat little PDF. You print it, your check stock's hopefully in the printer. It's going on blank paper, right? You want to double check that they all printed correctly and you close it. Did they print correctly? I'm going to mark yes. If they didn't, you've got some options here. Hit done and there you go. I'm making a note right now to do the print setup video. Um, and then I'm also doing one on expenses. That's either going to be right now or it's going to be tomorrow. But if you have any questions, don't forget, give me a comment. Uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and if you really need to talk to me, which I want to hear from everybody, right, um, go ahead and schedule an appointment on my website. I've got my link to my Calendly, and you can pick a time that's convenient for you, and we'll do a half-hour conversation about how we can help. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope to hear from you soon.